Hello everyone and welcome back to the second chess game between Marmaduke Wilbill and Edward Lev. This is the chess game from round 1 and this is the second chess game between these two players. And Wilbill defeated Edward Lev in the first game and this is the second game. Will he be able to do the same? This time he is playing with the white pieces and this game was also a pretty instructive chess game. So let's check out how this chess game went on. Marmaduke Bilbil starts the game with the English opening c5, e5, e3, c5, knight to c3, knight to c6, g3, bishop to e7, bishop to g2, d6, d3, knight to f6, a3. Well, black's pawn structure is looking like Pillsbury's stonewall. So after a3, we have bishop to e6, knight from g to e2, d5, exchanging the pawns. Castling, also black castled, queen to c2, exchanging the knights, bishop to d5, but then e4, and slowly gaining the advantage in the center. After defending the bishop, bishop to e3, queen to d7, f4, pushing the pawn and threatening to push the pawn, f5, trapping the bishop. So, black played f5, exchanging the pawns in the center, capturing with the knight, knight to f4. Knight to g4, attacking the bishop, defending, and c4. Marmaduke will be push the pawn. And with this move, he is slowly gaining the pawn majority in the center. He has the control in the center. Just like in the first game. In the first game, Edward Love had very little control in the center. So that's why he lost the chess game, even though he was a piece up. But this time, at the early stage of the game, once again, Marmaduke will be has the pawn majority in the center. We have bishop to f7. Capturing the pawn is not a good idea. Because of this continuation, knight takes bishop, queen takes on e6, and capturing the pawn. Attacking the queen. What else? Capturing. Capturing back with the bishop. And in this position, black is much worse. Because of this terrible isolated pawn. Also attacking on b7, threatening to check the king and win the pawn. And sooner or later, it looks like black is going to lose a pawn. It is very difficult to hold on. So this is losing for black. Let's take it back. So in this position, after d4, we have bishop to f7. And then advancing and gaining the space in the chessboard. Slowly advancing. And white has two passed pawns in the center. Two connected passed pawns. And this is also losing for black. Rook from a to b8. h3. Kicking the knight away. d5. As you can see, viciously advancing and threatening to play e6, forking the queen and the bishop. So bishop to c5, checking the kick, moving the kick, defending the queen, and then rook from a to e1, queen to g5. As you can see, white has millions of threats, threatening to push the pawns in the center. And then, in this position, black is going to have lots of trouble. In a difficult position, when there are so many things to consider, it is always easy to blunder, and in this position, this is what black did. He played queen to g5. This was a blunder, but let's take it back. Bishop takes on a3 is not working, because of pushing the pawn, as you can see. White has millions of threats in this position, so defending the queen, but this time pushing the pawn. If defending the bishop, pushing the pawn again, forking the queen and the rook, this is all over for black. So when there are millions of threats, and when black had a terrible and a very difficult position, it is easy to blunder. So this is what black did. A blunder. Queen to g5. What would you do in this position? Can you see the blunder? Well, we will play it. Knight to e6. Attacking the queen. Forking the queen. And the rook. And the bishop. So going back. Defending the queen. Would you capture the rook, or is there a better move in this position? Well, there is a better move, but can you see that move? What would you do? Bishop to g5. If you say bishop to g5, then you are correct. And black can't defend the bishop. And white simply captured the bishop. This is better than capturing the rook. This is a free piece for white. Not winning the exchange, but winning the full piece. After queen to b5. Defending and attacking, defending the rook, rook to b1, defending the queen, and bishop to d6, b6, 
who rook from b to c8 is not better because of knight takes on b7. So after bishop to d6, we have b6, and then capturing the rook. Queen takes, on c5, bishop to d6, defending, e6, advancing, pushing the vicious looking, pass pawns. And black is in big trouble, black needs to resign, bishop to g6. Most of the modern grandmasters in our times would resign in this position, after bishop to f4, defending the queen, queen to d2, and king to h8, queen to d4, forcing black to exchange the queens. And exchanging the queens, well in this position, if something like queen to c8, then bishop takes on h6, capturing the knight, and the pawn is pinned, and also threatening checkmate, this is once again losing for black, so what else but to exchange the queens, simplifying the chess game. When white is a piece up, it is logical to exchange the pieces and simplify the chess game, so after capturing the pawn, knight to g8, and rook from f to c1, knight to f6, rook takes pawn, Knight to e4, and doubling the rooks. Also, Will Will wants to exchange the rooks. King to g8, and after rook to c8, black resigned. Another instructive chess game, and once again, Edward Lev was crushed against Will Will. In the first game, he was one extra piece in the beginning of the chess game, and Will Will played terrible in the opening, but he regained his composure, and he had the pawn majority in the center, even in the first game. That was the problem of black. Black was playing for the material, but white had the positional advantage. So in this position, black is losing. And let me show you the possible continuation if capturing the rook, then rook takes on c8, only defense, and rook takes on e8, check, mate. There is no defense. So in this position, let me show you one more possible continuation if moving the king, then capturing the knight, capturing back, and checking the king, moving the king, and capturing the rook, check, bishop takes on e8, rook to c8, and this is all over for black, another instructive chess game from the London 1851 chess tournament, and with this victory after the second victory of Will Will, Will Will passed the round, he passed the first round, and he simply eliminated his opponent, Edward Löw was eliminated, and this system was little bit cruel, isn't it? So this was the knockout elimination system. When you lose your opponent, you are going to be eliminated. In the normal tournament rules, of course, it doesn't matter if you lose the first games. You will always have some other chances against different opponents. But this was the knockout elimination system, just like in the tennis tournaments. So after this crushing chess game, Edward Löw got crushed. And he was kicked out of the tournament. He was eliminated. So in this position, after king to g8, rook to c8, forcing black to exchange the rooks. Also these pass pawns are looking decisive in this chess game. And thank you for watching. And I hope to see you next time. Take care and bye bye.